Good morning, friends and family of Christ Episcopal Church. It is September 20th, Tuesday. I'm excited to be with you all again, donning my sad Red Sox hat in this time of year. Um, we're grateful that you would join us today. Um, I pray that you all have had a blessed and joyful week. Um, yeah, so today um, I will get started um, with a quick moment of silence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. <clears throat> we are on page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer. Um, at this point, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. All right. We are on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will continue with the inventory and the Psalter. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. All right, we will be reading the Jubilate. Jubilate. I still haven't figured out how to pronounce that. If you are not able to tell, uh, we're working on that pronunciation. Um, <clears throat> in this, this is on page 82 at the bottom of the Book of Common Prayer. Um, I will lead us up until where the line ends in an asterisk, and then we will read together. Um, after that line. Um, so we will begin. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. All right, our readings for today. We will be on the, um, the first one will be Psalm 78, 1 through 39. I will read these alone. If you want to follow along, um, this reading will be from the NRSV. Um, at the end of it, um, together we will say glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. All right. Let's read. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up to tell and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. That they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to his law. They forgot what he had done, and the miracles that he had shown them. 
In the sight of their ancestors he worked marvels in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through it, and made the waters stand like a heap. In the daytime he led them with a cloud, and all night long with a fiery light. He split rocks open in the wilderness, and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock, and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they, st they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though he struck the rock so that the water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard, he was full of rage. A fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger mounted against Israel because they had no faith in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he let out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp, all around their dwellings. And they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. But before they had satisfied their craving, while the food was still in their mouths, the anger of God rose against them, and he killed the strongest of them, and laid low the flower of Israel. In spite of this, they still sinned. They did not believe in his wonders. So he, he made their days vanish like a breath and their years in terror. When he killed them, they sought for him. They repented and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God, their redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths, but they lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him. They were not true to his covenant. Yet he, being compassionate, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Often he restrained his anger and did not stir up all his wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and does not come again. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. We will continue in Luke 3. We'll be reading verses 15 through 22. Um, after after I conclude reading that, I will say the word of the Lord, um, and you will answer. Thank we will answer together. Thanks be to God. So if we could go to Luke three, you can follow along again. I will read this alone. <clears throat> Luke three begins with this: As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, Jesus John answered all of them by saying, "I baptize you with water." But one is more powerful than I. One who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the, his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with, so, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. <clears throat> But Herod the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, in, and when Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, we continue on in the Book of Common Prayer. Um, we will be on page. Um, we'll be on page, I think ninety three, um, the Song of Simeon. Um, with this one, there are asterisks again. I will read up until the asterisks alone, and then we will respond together. Um, Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. 
For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, on page 96, um, and if you would join me in affirming our faith and saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, we transition into the prayers. Um, we will say the Lord's Prayer together here on page 97, and then at the bottom we will be doing suffrage A. Um, I will read where it says V alone, and then we will respond together at R. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll begin with suffrage. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the, Eter the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into morning, drive far from us all the wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, we will continue on page 100. Um, we will do the second prayer mission. Read it together. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 100, we continue together with the general... With the, oh no, actually... We're going to take a second to pause, um, oftentimes in a rush, as I might have just been. Um, we often forget to pause for the many intercessions, the needs of others, um, our needs, and the thanksgivings God might offer to us. Um, so I want us to take a moment of silence for us, um, to reflect on those, to pray for those in need um, in our own lives and others. Um, feel free to share those in the comments below if you have a concern you'd love to share with us and we would love to continue to be in contact with you on that. Um, so I will we'll have a moment of silence and then I will say, um, the Lord be with you. We'll respond also with you and then go into the general thanksgiving.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. All right, I will read the prayer of St. Chrysostom, and then we'll say amen together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this morning for morning prayer. And if you have any um, prayer requests or needs that we could meet pastorally um, as a church, we would love to be in contact with you. Please feel free to share. Um, I'd love to get to know you all as well. So stop by, say hi at church or um, yeah, whatever you might need. So thank you for this time together. May you have a blessed day in the Lord.